Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 12th in a series of video tutorials on how to create a mobile game in Unity 5. So this episode is going to be the big one. This is one where we generate our sections at random. So if you remember last episode, I had a selection of three sections which I created. And as I said, ideally, if you want more, go ahead and make more. I'll tell you how to um, improvise and allow your script to have more random sections. So I'm going to start this one by creating a script which keeps track of our x-axis at all times. So right click, create script, and I'm going to call this one something real simple. Um, in fact, we'll call it next axis. Because this is going to be um, where we define where to place our next section. So in here, we're going to have two variables. One's a static and one isn't. So the static one is the one we're going to modify from a different script. And the non-static one is going to be the one where we can visually see what it actually is currently set at. So static var, and I'm going to have it as um, the x axis. That will be an integer. And we're actually going to set it as a number right now. Now, the number you've got to use for this, you have to be quite specific. In fact, because we're going to be specific, we're going to change that to a float. I think it'd probably be easier as a float because chances are it's not going to be a whole number. So we want the x axis to be here. So we want our first section to be placed here. So if we take our section one. And we can see that it is a, we have aligned it there. So if we were to actually drag this up, you would see that it matches just nicely there. So we can take the x-axis of that there. So copy that and paste it there. And semicolon. Next one, var. Let's call this internal axis. That is also going to be a float. So function update and then we're going to have in internal axis is equal to the x axis. Semicolon and close function and save. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a, an empty game object where we can store this script. So game object, create empty, right click, rename. We'll have this as axis keeper and just drag and drop onto there. So hopefully you should have that set to zero, but when we start our game up, this zero over here should instantly change to 216, whatever yours is set at. So that's fine. So the next thing we need to do is create a script which creates the random generation for us. So right click, create JavaScript. And I'm going to call this one um, generate sections and open it up. So this one requires quite a few um, variables. So I'm going to start by declaring the sections. So var section 01 is going to be game object. And I'm going to copy that, 2 and 3. So here, if you've created, let's say, seven sections, you would have a variable for each section. So you'd go all the way down to seven here in your variables. If you've got 10, you go to 10. If you've got 6, you go to 6, and so on. Oops. So next thing we need to do, we need to set a couple of variables to define our axis. So var new x axis. That will be, um, let me think, that will be a float. And uh, that will be equal to what we have in our next axis, which is next axis dot the x axis. So next axis dot the 
x axis, semicolon. Next one is going to be, um, let's see, what can we have next? The next one is going to be the random number generator. So let's have var gen for generate, sec for section. So that will be an integer. Easier to keep it an integer on this one, not a float. The next one we're going to use is going to be um, our new section. So var new sec, that will be a game object. So the idea of new sec here is that is going to be the place where we put one of our sections when we've generated the random number. So after we've done that, what we need to do is we need to set another variable and that's going to be the next position, which is going to be a vector three. So var next position. In fact, let's put that as a capital P. Next position, vector three. And we're going to make that equal to uh, vector three. And here on the X, we need to put next axis dot the x axis here we need to put our y value so if we were to let's say have section one in the correct place just there i think that aligns quite neatly yeah so all you would do is if you align your first section correctly, how would you would want it to appear, you can take that value there of 25.9. So 25.9. So if yours is 25.9, you put that there. If yours is 30 something, then you put that there. Just align that section with where you want it to appear and you can use that number there. And the same goes for the Z or Z axis. So we can copy that number and we can put it there. Oops. In fact, we'll type it out actually. So 16, 16.7916, semicolon. And I'm just going to control Z to undo that and put that back down there. So the next thing we need to do is we need to do the function. Now the function is going to be an on trigger enter because the way we're going to do this is each section is going to have a specific object, which is going to be the trigger. So when our, our um, rocket goes through this trigger, it generates the next section for us. So we're going to do function on trigger enter in brackets, my standard call and collider, open bracket. Now, what we need to do here, the first line, is we need to state our next position. So as soon as we go through this trigger, the first thing we need to do is find the position that we're going to be using. So all we can really do to keep it nice and simple is we can actually copy technically what we've got for our variable there. So if we copy the variable line and just get rid of everything we don't actually need. So the line should say next position equals vector three, next axis dot the x axis, 25.9 and 16. 0.7916. Next thing we need to do is generate a random number. And we can do that by gen sec, which was our random number gen uh, sorry, random number generator variable, equals random dot range. Now I have three sections, so I'm gonna have to put a random number between one and four. Now the reason I put four instead of three is because for some bizarre reason, when you use random dot range, the highest value never um, appears. It, it, it never ever comes out. It's one of them weird quirks of um, programming, I guess. So if you've got 10 sections, make sure your random range is one to 11. If you've got five sections, make sure your random range is one to six. So always go one above how many, however many sections you have. Next thing we need to do is we need to make our new x axis equals to next axis dot the x axis. So to keep everything in check, we copy that variable line again, go underneath, paste, and just make sure 
uh, sorry, mu x axis is equals to next axis dot the x axis. I apologize if this get, is getting a little bit confusing. Sometimes programming and logic can get um, a bit complicated and a bit troublesome, especially for beginners. But if you stick with it, you, you will get used to it. it. It is pretty easy once you get used to it. So once we've got all that done, what we need to do now is a couple of if statements to say, if our random number generator has come out one, then we need to play section one. If it's come out two, we need to play section two. So if gen sec equals one, and that's a double equals, remember, open curly bracket, then what we need to say is new sec is equal to section zero one. And close curly bracket. So I'm going to take that if statement. I'm going to go into copy and change that to a number two, and that to a number two. Paste again and change it to three and three. So basically, we've accounted for every possible outcome there. If it becomes a one, if it becomes a two, if it becomes a three, we do section one, two, three. So once we've defined what actual object our new sec is going to be, what we need to do is instantiate it. In other words, we need to place it in the position we have already defined in our next position. So we can do that by going instantiate, open bracket, new sec. So we need to place new sec in next position, which we've got up here. And then to keep everything in check, we need to use something called quaternion. You can do quaternion, or however you guys pronounce it. It's a strange word, isn't it? Uh, uh, dot identity. So you would need to have that there because it just create, uh, allows the instantiate to actually work and allows you to place this um, game object in this position correctly. Also, last thing we need to do is each of my sections are 500 in length. I've got everything um, the same length. So just to double check that, my background scale 500. That is the complete length of each section. So what I would need to do is I would need to add 500 to the X axis. So what we do is next axis dot the X axis plus equals 500 semicolon and then close curly bracket and save. So this script now will generate a section once we pass through a trigger. So firstly let's create our very first trigger in our first area. So game object, 3D object, cube and we now need to place that cube in the correct position. So if we bring it to about there, let's increase the scale to 10 by 20 by 10. So we pretty much cover the entire uh, section so we can't exactly miss it at all. Make sure you tick its trigger on the box collider. And then we just need to drag and drop that script onto the cube. So we can drag and drop there. So I'm gonna right click, rename and I'm going to call it generator. So now we need to define a couple of our um, variables. So the section one game object will be section one, section two is obviously section two, and section three is section three. So here you can see we have our new x-axis there, we have our gen sec number which will change each time we go through, and new sec leave as none because if you recall in the script what we do is we make new sec equals to either section one two or three according to our random number, ge number generator so that will change as we pass through here and then you've got your next positions right there so if we press play now by default what should happen is either section one two or three should appear here next to this start section instead of just falling off a cliff so let's give it a go. So press play, we've gone through the trigger and you can see that it has generated section three. 
I'm just going to press that pause button and you can see down here that we have section 03 clone and if you go back to scene view you'll see that it has indeed cloned it right here in front of us. So I'm going to stop that now, press play again and let's see if it will generate a different section. So it's generated section 1 this time as you can see down here in the hierarchy. So if we get to the end of section 1, just turn my volume down a touch, oh we crashed. So if we got to the end of section 1 what would happen is there would be nothing, we would fall off a cliff. So if I press play and then press pause after we get through the trigger and if we have a look you'll see that no further sections have generated after section 1. So it's a constant process that we need to keep going once we go through each section. So the way to do that is if you duplicate the generator, drag it into section 1, zero out the axis, and then arrange it in the position where it can generate the next section. So let's put it about there. So once again, if you duplicate the generator and put it in section 2, zero out the axis, and arrange it correctly. So let's have that about there. And lastly, if we do it for section three, uh, into there, zero out the axis, put it into position, and we're done. So the next thing we need to do is let's take off the mesh renderer on each of them generators just so they're not in the way that it doesn't make the game look silly. Uh, section 2, generator off for mesh, and the same with section 1. And there we go. So now we should be able to play the entire game non-stop. So as we go, we'll have flown through each of the triggers without us even knowing. But then triggers will appear in every single section, in every single um, clone. So you can see down there, section 03 is cloned, which is the one we're in now. And it's going to duplicate it another section 3. So when we get to the end of this section 3, we're going into another section 3. As you can see. So we'll end up flying through another trigger any minute now which will generate another section hopefully not section 3 again there we go so we can scroll down our hierarchy and it generated section 3 again so just proof a point there because that's a bit odd that it's generated section 3 three times in a row it's generated section 1 there and as we keep going get to the next one it's generated section 3 so it will generate randomly so one thing to note, when we crash, it doesn't reset the number on the um, x-axis script here. So what we'll need to do is when we go on to our death script, we need to do one final um, bit of uh, code in here and put next axis dot the x axis is equals to that number there that you have in your float. Semicolon and save. So now this game will run absolutely perfectly. It will run flawlessly and it will go on forever until you crash and die and have to restart the level all over again. So that is how we create our random generator and that is how we create our random sections one after the other without any problems. The next episode is going to be the final episode and what we're going to do we're going to have a few finishing touches on this game and we're going to look at building for firstly we're going to look at building it for Windows or PC as a testing facility so you can build it to test and then we'll look at building it for um, Android. Now I can't actually build it for Android in this tutorial for legal reasons but I can show you how to build it for an Android or iOS device. So until next episode, thank you very much for watching.